Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, it's time to have some fun. Good morning, everybody. Glad you joined me today. We're going to talk all about snowflakes today. Snowflakes are part of the water cycle. So when we think about snow, it's like a frozen raindrop, but not really. So we're gonna learn how does a snowflake form? And you'll learn all about what is the water cycle. The Snowflake, a Water Cycle Story by Neil Waldman. January, on a moonless night, a tiny snowflake fell from a great gray cloud. It floated slowly downward with thousands of other flakes coming to rest on the jagged peak of a mountain. February, a wind whistled over the mountain carrying the snowflake back up into the air. The snowflake twisted and spun, swirling into a pond on the mountainside. The snowflake melted into a droplet, but as the days grew colder, the pond froze. March, as the sun grew warmer, the ice began to melt. The snowflake became a droplet of water once again. It fell through a crack in the rocky pond bottom and trickled down into the ground. Downward it sank into the blackness within the mountain Along with a million other droplets, it splashed into an underground stream that flowed deep into the earth. April. After a long journey, the stream turned upward, bubbling through the ground in an icy spring. Sparkling in the sunlight, the droplet rushed into a brook. It danced around some stones, spilled over a waterfall, and surged into a raging river. The droplet, droplet flowed past villages and cities under a great gray bridge where cars and buses carried people to and fro. May, a shiny metal pipe sucked the droplet through a maze of zigzagging pipes into the irrigation system of a nearby farm. It spun through a long rubber hose, swished into a spinning sprinkler, and squirted up into the air. The droplet flew into a great arc, landing at last on the leaf of a cabbage plant. June, in the chill of morning, a heavy blanket of fog rolled in over the farm. The droplet slowly evaporated and floated up into the thick grayness. But soon the rising sun began to bake the air as the fog rose high into the sky and became a cloud. The cloud joined a mass of darkening storm clouds. Lightning flashed, thunder rumbled, and a torrent of raindrops dived toward the earth. The droplet rocketed downward and splashed into the clear waters of a reservoir. It was sucked through a series of filters that removed all of the dirt particles until only pure water remained. August, the droplet swished through a long metal pipe. It was pumped into a smaller pipe and then into an even smaller pipe where it suddenly stopped and started and stopped and started again in herky jerky motion. September, in her bathroom, a young girl twisted a faucet and the droplet poured out into the bathroom sink. The girl dipped her hands into the water and lifted the droplet onto her cheek. A second later, it was falling, 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 splashing, swishing, spinning through the drain into another dark pipe. October, after a long dark journey, the droplet poured out into the ocean. It flowed past fields of waving sea grasses, 
over corals of many colors and into the mouth of a great striped fish. Passing through the fish's body, the droplet returned to the sea. November, rising up to the ocean's surface, the droplet was pulled steadily toward the shore. On the crest of a mighty wave, it bubbled into foam, crashing onto the sandy beach of a tropical island. December, in the sunlight of a winter's morning, the droplet evaporated. It rose into the air, entering a great gray cloud. A whistling wind pushed the cloud across the sea, past cities and towns, beyond an icy spring and over a raging river. It drifted past a waterfall and a frozen pond. On a moonless night, a tiny snowflake fell from the cloud. It floated downward with thousands of other flakes coming to rest on the jagged peak of a mountain. Snowflakes are one of the most incredible things that you can find in nature. There are no two snowflakes exactly alike. Snowflakes are a unique design depending on how the individual molecules of water come together for that particular snowflake. And they're also incredibly beautiful. Willie Bentley saw the beauty of the snowflake and learned how to take the picture of a snowflake with a traditional camera. Today, Kenneth Liberick uses a microscopic camera and takes pictures of snowflakes and creates beautiful images in his book, The Secret Life of a Snowflake. Many of the images that are being used in this video are from his book. Like Willie Bentley, he studies the science of a snowflake and how a snowflake can have an incredible, unique structure. A snowflake is born in the middle of a cloud on a cold day in winter. Snowflakes are formed because of water vapor condensing inside the cloud around a tiny piece of dust. The conditions have to be perfect for that snowflake to form. It has to be cold and there has to be a certain percentage of humidity in the air. Once it starts to form, the initial part of the snowflake is called the facet. It's faceted like a diamond. I like to call it the snowflake face. That snowflake face is in the shape of a hexagon. A hexagon is a six-sided shape and it has six corners that grow the snowflake's legs. Each leg of the snowflake forms because new water molecules attach itself to the snowflake. And every time a new water molecule attaches itself, it builds on that hexagon or six-sided shape, and it does so in an incredibly equal manner on all six sides. A snowflake is a perfect example of symmetry in nature. So if you took a snowflake and folded it in half, each half of the snowflake would match the other half perfectly. So no matter how the water molecules attach to the snowflake, it's always symmetrical in the way that they attach. And so all six sides of a snowflake will come together and be perfect images of each other. So this creates different types of snowflakes. There is actually snowflake identification that you can practice when you see a snowflake falling from the sky. Sometimes the snowflakes will fall as what are called needles. 
needles are basically a snowflake that wraps itself around itself. The outer legs wrap around each other and create a single needle. Another type of snowflake is called a capped column. It's a column with two plates on its ends, like an axle with two wheels. But the most beautiful snowflakes are called stellar dendrites. These are the fern-like legs on the snowflake that make it look like it's soft and fluffy. If you take an identification chart of snowflakes out on a snowy day, it's fun to go out and see which snowflakes you can find. You can go to this website to find out all the different types of snowflakes. They even have a template for you to be able to use to go outside and identify your own snowflakes. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye to everyone. Goodbye, goodbye, we sure did have some fun. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you had a lot of fun learning about snowflakes and the water cycle, and hopefully we'll get some more snow soon so you can go outside and learn how to identify those snowflakes. See you later.